Hi, I'm Pete Sumrall, and in today's teaching, my father, Dr. Lester Sumrall, is going to open our minds to the realm of angels. Throughout the Bible, angels have appeared to men, but why? Stay tuned for today's teaching. Stories of angels appear in scriptures from the first book to the last. Many people are unaware that our world includes the realm of angels. God wants us to understand both worlds. Join Dr. Sumrall as he opens our minds to the realm of angels. It's always exciting to study the, the total Word of God. It is so easy to fragment the truth of God and to give more attention to one part than and to another. Uh, there are sometimes people that, uh, that, that begin to study uh, things like the return of Israel and something like this, and they put that total activity in there till they have nothing else to talk about except that or other relations of prophecy. But uh, you and I uh, wish to have the total revelation of God, Genesis to Revelation. <laughs> and and uh, you couldn't have the total revelation of God unless you studied angels. And so we're delighted that we have set our time aside and our, our feelings aside and said, now it's time to, to study these beings that God made. Uh, we could be uh, surrounded by innumerable uh, spirit world creatures uh, that our natural physical eyes are not open to, but in our spiritual being, uh, we can feel their presence and we can uh, un un understand that. And sometimes God pulls the shield across and we actually visualize and see and see them. Uh, in our life that is to come, in our eternal life, we will live with these persons uh, throughout eternity. and. and what a joy it's going to be to make new acquaintances of the celestial world, uh, of, the, of the creation of God. In the beginning, all that God made was good. The Bible says so. He made it, and it was good. Now, this is uh, so very true of angelic creatures, uh, that God made them, and they were good. But uh, a truth that you have to know is this. Uh, God cannot compel anybody to serve him, or otherwise you would be a slave. You would not be a free, a free creature. And if you have love, you cannot compel love. If you seek to compel love, then you don't have love. Love has to be a free will operation and function, or otherwise you just don't have love. And, and so... Uh, uh, in heaven, there was a group under Lucifer who were the praise group in heaven. And they decided that they should be higher in rank. And they decided they should even be like the one who created them. Five times, uh, the one that we know today as Lucifer and Satan, he said, I will exalt myself. Well, that's the problem in our world today. And evidently, it was a problem then. And that was the beginning of transgression, the exaltation of self. And from that time until today, we've had negative situations in the world, including Adam. God would not make him refrain from what he was doing, but he could tell him, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall die. He did not die physically. He lived another 930 years. He did not disolically, because the soul is the mind, the emotions, and the will. He had all three of these, had an amazing mind to name all the animals and remember their names, and, and he had an, uh, an, an ama amazing emotions. One of his sons killed the other, and so there was a very emotional household there. And then willpower, he willed to do this, he willed to do that, and his will oftentimes wasn't the father's will. It was his own personal will. 
and therefore he was not synchronizing with the one that created him. Now you and I are in the same category as today. You can, you can say, I wish to obey God, or you can wish to say, I'm going to do as I please. I have made up my mind. How I many heard somebody say that? It's always wrong when you make up your mind. Your little screwball mind has a, has a way of, of, of self-adornment and, 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 and self-promotion. Uh, you have to do what Jesus did. Jesus said, not my will, but thy will be done. So you have to let the will of God be accomplished in your lives. We're so glad that the persons and that we are studying at this time, uh, they're letting the will of God take place in their lives. We, we will de deal with both, both, both parts of them. Uh, on page six in your, in your teaching syllabus there, it, it says at the bottom of the page that there are distinct categories of these angelic persons and, and, and creatures. And then uh, in our last lesson, we were describing these archangels and, and had the scripture there for archangels, and there was a lot more seraphim, uh, which is a distinct uh, creature other than archangels. And it, we gave you a long, long uh, scripture there of their being and their activities. And then we went into cherubim, uh, which is a, another one of the uh, creatures that God has created. Uh, looks different, acts different, is different uh, uh, from, from the others. And then we began to deal with some that maybe we don't ever think about. Number D under here, the holy ones and the watchers. <laughs> you may have somebody watching you today that you're not aware of. The watchers. Now, now the, this is from the Word of God, and so you have to, have to say, well, I'm going to have to learn more about that. Uh, but there are are creatures that are angelic in nature, uh, who they are the holy ones devoted to God and loving God with all their hearts is the only way they got into that category. And then they, there are the, the watchers, and the, I gave you the scripture, you have them here. And then we got into Ephesians chapter 6 to where there are principalities. A principality uh, is an area over which a prince presides. And, and so uh, then you get into the, uh, into the, the different types uh, of angels and that there's one above the other that rules the other and so forth. A prince is over others. And the Word of God says there are uh, principalities. And, and so we were dealing with that in, in our last letter. There are giant angels that are over other categories of angels in the great creation of God. Then on page 8, at the top of the page, it says, and there are powers. In Colossians 1.16, it says, for by him were all things created. Say created. God created everything that there is. Now some of it, some of it, you may say, but there are briars in the briar patch. It might be that God had never created a briar at all. Before a rose comes out, it's similar to a briar. But as soon as it opens up, it is loaded with beauty and with fragrance. So it is possible that God never created a briar, that the briar created itself. It went on a downhill row rather than an upgrade. When God creates a, a, a creature, uh, there is a, a, a propensity there that can be put into action to where they can increase or decrease. Uh, 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 otherwise, you've lost that thing called free will. And there are angels in the angelic categories that are increasing themselves in stature with God. And, and you will too in, in, in heaven. You might be over three cities in the beginning and you might be over five cities later and Jesus went up as far as ten cities uh, that you will be ruling over somewhere in, in, our, in our universe. Uh, but he says, for by him all things were created uh, that are in heaven or that are on the earth. And then he begins to name them. Some of them are visible and some of them are invisible. Now that's the area that you could uh, 
write a whole book about and name the book Visible and Invisible. Um, man knows a lot about uh, the visible. He sees the beautiful palm trees. He sees the gorgeous flowers. He sees so many things that are visible. But besides the part that's visible, there is a world of, that you don't see with your natural carnal eye, that it is not possible for it to look into what we call a spirit world. And so there are things that are invisible just to man, not to God, just to man. They are visible and they are in, invisible. Now he says, in that world of visible and invisible, he says there are thrones. So this means in a world that you cannot see, and a world that you cannot mark down, that, that you have there thrones. A throne is where a ruler sits, of course. And so uh, he said, now there's some of these that are visible. I think you can understand that. There are great leaders in the world that are seated upon uh, a seat of power, and they, they rule from there. But he says there are others that you cannot see, but they're real. Say real. But they are real. They are there. Now, I, I know it's, it's not easy to convince people of this. I spoke in Albania one time to a group of young people, and I said, I would like to talk to you about God. One leaned over to the other and says, how is he going to talk about something that don't exist? Because he, all of his life, had talked that there was no God. And I said, the first thing I want to tell you about God is that God is love. Now, he says, this thing that don't exist has love. He says, how do, you, how do you figure that one out? And here were these young people. They weren't angry, and, and they weren't trying to hurt me. Uh, they had been taught that there was no God and that that which was not couldn't have a love, of course. And so they had to be taught that atheism and communism was a lie, a lie from the devil and a lie from hell. Then you start saying, well, who do you think? made that flower. Do you think it's by accident? Or if it is, start some more accidents. They're very pretty. Who do you think made those stars? Do you think they're an accident? Just happen? Who makes the sun come up precisely on schedule? Do you think that's an accident? Well, why don't you get on schedule then? And, and, and so you have to begin and you have to teach them the reality of our universe and that it all begins with a, a mighty God who created all things. And he says, and there, whether they are, are, are thrones and where they are dominions, where there are dominions, you say, what's the difference? Well, Caesar sat upon his throne in Rome, and away over in uh, Judea, across the world, clear across the great Mediterranean Sea, they had a man named Pilate. And Pilate let Jesus die. Pilate permitted Jesus to die on the cross. And so you not only have thrones, you have dominions. You have delegated power. You have a one that says, you can do this, and he, he performs it, you see. And so not only do we have the top person seated in authority, but we have lesser persons. Now, we're dealing with a world of spirit. And, and, and uh, I can't blame you if it seems a, a difficult situation for you. But I want to tell you something, and I'll maybe get to that some right now in this lesson. It is this, that in the, in the pagan world, they have reached this, they have reached this uh, area much faster than in the Christian world. And I think the reason for it is we haven't given the time that they have given. The pagans give great time to the spirit world. They dance. They, they drink, they scream and they shout, sometimes they fast, moving into what they call a world of spirit. And we, as God's people, live so naturally, say naturally, we live by our flesh, we, we live by our desires, and, and so we live so naturally, we don't function in that spirit world. And when we do in this country of ours, then they become spiritists, they become soothsayers, uh, they become sorcerers, and they move into the negative world that the pagan is in out there. They move into his world uh, out there, in, into a pagan world. They don't 
remain in a spirit world where the true angels of God are. Now, we could go into that, and I'm sure in our lesson we will be going uh, into it. There are people who have seen angels for sure. In the Bible, there are lots of them. But in the natural also, there, there, there are counts, and I just heard of one this week where, where the person was there, and they moved about a little bit, and they were nowhere, nowhere to be found. They had been conversing with a person uh, from another world. And, and, and so uh, we know, we know uh, that, that there are thrones and that there are dominions. Then he says there are principalities. And as I told you, a principality, as the word indicates itself, is an area over which a prince is the ruler. So he says, and there are principalities. There, in the spirit world that you cannot see today, uh, there is law and order and regulation. And there are spirits that didn't obey in the spirit world, and they bury them in places like the Euphrates River and, and, uh, and, and, and in other countries. Uh, a, a spirit told me that he came up and lived in a certain river there called the, the Danube River. He says, I am old man, Danube. And it was a spirit that was speaking through a young woman's mouth a deep, gruff spirit uh, speaking through her mouth. And so uh, when they don't obey, they are, they, 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 they are confined even today before the great judgment of God uh, takes place. But he says there are, there are principalities, and then he says there are powers. There are powers. Uh, <laughs> you could call that a committee, couldn't you? Uh, there are committees that work together. And this is an insight into our spirit world that very few humans, there wouldn't even be 1% of the people of our country that ever even, even read a thing like Colossians 1.16, or I get over to Ephesians, you see, and read what the Word of God has to say about these things. They're just afraid of it. They, 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 it's so unreal to their natural person until they don't want to be uh, get into it, but the word says that there are that there are powers, and that means a, a power means uh, two things: uh, it means authority, and it, it means energy. So these persons are given authority that they can do things, you know, without asking permission. They have authority. Then they have energy; they can move about and they can perform things that normally could not be performed. And so the Word of God is giving you here, uh, point by point, what kind of creatures that we have in this invisible world, in the study that we have angels, the messengers of God. Our study will mostly be in the positive, uh, showing you what the angels of God do. <coughs> you say, well, wh why do we want to study that? Well, one reason is uh, you take in the life of Jesus. Before he ever came to this earth, angels came. And the angels came and they spoke to Mary, said, you're going to conceive and bring forth a child. And she was a virgin. She wasn't married yet. Her, her fiancé couldn't quite grasp it, so an angel had to appear to him. And, and then you find that all through his life, there was angelic activity around him. And the nearer he got to Calvary, the closer the angels were. And that might be a great revelation to some of us, that the nearer you get to Calvary, the more angelic you have. There are people that have been terribly persecuted in some countries, like, like in communist China today. They see angels, you see. The, the, the closer we get to the hurts of the devil, the closer we get to the, to the support of angelic hosts uh, from heaven who come and help us. And so he says there are delegated powers, uh, uh, authorities, uh, and these powers uh, we could have a thousand on the board. We don't know. Saying do this, do that, do this, do the other. Uh, but they, they are an organized world over there. You're going to see it one day. And, and Santa Paul, uh, uh, some of us have seen the king 
and all of his courtiers, you know, riding in a beautiful golden chariot in London and so forth. You're going to see something so much greater than that, there won't be anything. That one day we shall see the one that's the ruler of all things, and we shall see under him all of the majesty and the glory be, be, being revealed. And I want to be there. How about you? And, and uh, I have a philosophy, and, and it's this. When your mind can't catch it, let your heart make your decision. Are you here? When your mind can't understand it, let your heart make your decision for you. And you'll be right then. Because our hearts say these things do exist. These things will be more apparent as we get closer to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you're going to hear more and more in our world that we live in today of angels helping and blessing and loving. And all the people said, all right, he says, and, and there shall be powers. All things were created by him, and they were created for him. And you should pause there for a little bit. Created by him for him. And, and so that means they're under his delegation. That means they're under his supervision. That means he tells them where to go and what to do. And so they're not only made by him, but they were made for him. And so th uh, that is a, a colossal revelation. And that these beautiful creatures, uh, they were made for, for God. Now, let us move down one at the Colossians 1 and 16. It says, and there were thrones, there were dominions, and, and, and then we go down to the evil angels. I think we should possibly. The devil's angels. In Psalm 78 and 49, it says, he cast upon them the fierceness of his anger and wrath and, uh, and indignation and trouble. Isn't that something? You ought, ought to maybe read that again, Psalm 78 and 49. Cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, his wrath, his indignation and trouble by sending evil angels upon them. So there are in this universe of ours not only good angels that belong to God, but evil ones that belong to the devil. They are those that rebelled in heaven and refused to be subject to God, and they couldn't stay in heaven anymore, and those are the ones that torment men. We, we go from that uh, to uh, the four living creatures. Uh, this is another classification of heavenly beings. The King, the King, Jer the King James uh, Version uh, classifies this group of angels as beasts, which is wrong. Uh, however, a better translation would be living creatures, as it is in most Bibles. In Revelation 4 and 6, before the throne, there, were, there is a sea of glass, like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures, full of eyes, in front and in back. And the first living creature was like a lion for strength. And the second living creature was like a calf, sacrifice. And the third living creature uh, had the face of a man, intelligence. And a fourth living creature was like a flying eagle uh, for, for quickness and, and haste and, 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 and moving. And these four living, living creatures or angels, each having six wings, uh, not, not four, but six wings, were full of eyes around and, and, and within, and they do not rest uh, day or night, but they are saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, who is, and is to come, the eternity the, uh, the, the, of, of our God, yesterday, today, and tomorrow are all the same. And then your D number there says, uh, wherever the living creatures uh, give glory and honor and thanks to him who sit on the throne who lives forever and forever. And so the four creatures that were here, their, their position was in, in eternity is to give glory and honor and thanks to the one that sits on the throne, which is the Heavenly Father, who lives forever and ever. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> give the Lord a hand, everybody. Glory be to God. 
we, we, we just pray that in our, in our world of uh, naturalism uh, that we say, well, I, I just can't get into that. Pray about it, search it out, and let God talk to you about it. Uh, we're going to move into our next lesson called reality, reality. Uh, and, and the reason we do that for, it is so possible that we're so close to automobiles and so close to clothes, so close to a house, that we can't reach into that area very easily. But God wants us to reach in there and to understand. It wouldn't be in the Bible if God didn't want us to know something about it. There's nothing in the Bible that's just there for nothing. Everything in the Bible means something, and therefore we're going to reach for all of the glorious truth that's in the Word of God. And all the people said, give the Lord another hand. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Well, see, broadcasting is privileged to bring you these life-changing messages by Dr. Lester Sumrall. If you found today's teaching valuable, please consider supporting one or more of these programs and have your name added as the sponsor. Call the number on the screen to find out more. I'm Pete Sumrall, and thank you for watching.